Good morning. Uh, I wanted to share with you today uh, some of the basics of the digestive system. That's what we're going to be looking at next. So, so far we've done respiratory system, circulatory system, and today we're going to move to the digestive system. Uh, so remember with the <clears throat> circulation system and respiration system, we were dealing with absorbing oxygen and carbon dioxide and then transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide. With the digestive system, we're going to be looking at absorbing and transporting the nutrients. But before we do that, we have to get the the food and then break down the food. And that would be the digestive system. So the basics that you should know is that all vertebrates have what's called an alimentary canal. And the alimentary canal is literally the tube that goes through you from mouth to anus. And so, you know, you could have a discussion on whether or not food is actually inside your body. It's inside the tube that goes through your body. So really what we're doing is bringing the outside into our body and then it's got to be absorbed and distributed. So within the alimentary canal, you have specialty organs. For instance, the stomach, small intestine, and large intestine, and in some vertebrates, the cloaca. And these specialty organs usually have a specialized compartmental environment. For instance, the stomach has the high acidity, the low pH, <clears throat> that you are probably already familiar with. The stomach secretes hydrochloric acid and it then uses that acid to denature the proteins and start the, uh, the enzyma enzymatic breakdown of, of those proteins. Not much else is accomplished in the stomach other than mechanical digestion. So notice the first two uh, sections in our diagram here are digestion and I'm sorry, ingestion, my bad, ingestion where we're bringing food in and then mechanical digestion or mechanical breakdown. Now this varies across the vertebrates, right? You can have fish that don't really chew, uh, or alligators, which pretty much just swallow things whole snakes. Uh, and then in that case, it's accomplished by the stomach as the stomach churns and, uh, and uh, mushes the food, it's going to start to physically break down the, um, the food. Uh, but teeth or, or, um, jaws can help in that way. So some, some vertebrates certainly have jaws and teeth, and that's going to help with the physical digestion. Um, <clears throat> all throughout the alimentary canal, you have to propel the food. You're going to have what's called peristalsis, which is a wave like contraction and it pushes the food down. Um, and so that is going to be seen all throughout the, uh, alimentary canal. Um, small intestine is going to be our big digester and absorber. Uh, all of the absorption takes place in the small intestine. And then the large intestine is primarily focused on absorbing water back into the system. Uh, and then we have accessory organs. The two that you're most familiar with would be the liver, which creates bile and the gallbladder stores it. And the pancreas, which secretes enzymes. And then the enzymes are going to be put into the small intestine. So the accessory organs, they don't have food inside them ever. But the idea is they're going to make the specialized secretions that have enzymes or, uh, or the certain pH that the, um, organs need to be at, and they're going to secrete it in. Usually it is right in this first part of the small intestine. That's where it's going to be dumped in. <clears throat> So let's look at our common features. So what is the same? What is the difference? Uh, so take a, uh, take a look at these diagrams, compare between the shark, salamander, lizard, pigeon, and cow, and think about what organs you see them 
all have, and then again, what they all have different. You can use the color coding because they don't look all the same. Uh, so hit pause and discuss as a class. Well, good. I hope you guys had a chance to determine uh, some of the similar structures. So notice they all have an esophagus. You're right. They all have a stomach. They all have an intestine. Um, and they all have a gallbladder. And they all have a pancreas. <clears throat> and some of the things that they don't all share, uh, the cow doesn't have a cloaca, um, and only the pigeon has a crop and gizzard. Uh, and, um, while a lot of them have a cecum, we don't really see one in the salamander. Uh, but while all of them, <clears throat> while a cow has a cecum, we don't. Uh, we just have the remnants, we have the appendix. Uh, so there are some differences. So what, so what makes these different? Why do different vertebrates have different systems? Well, let's, for instance, take a look at birds. Birds have a crop and a gizzard. That's kind of these extra organs they have. Now the crop stores food. <clears throat> it's going to be used to feed the babies that they have. The crop... Um, as they come to the babies, you will see them regurgitate out uh, food that's been stored in their crop. And then the gizzard is going to be used to grind up and mush up. It usually has little pebbles or sand in it. Birds will actually eat the sands or pebbles on the side of the road. And the idea is that's going to help mush up. Uh, and then the cloaca that birds have is, and reptiles, and you can see that all of these, except for the cow, they all have a cloaca. The cloaca is a common tube that the digestive system exits, the reproductive system uses the cloaca, and the urinary system um, is going to use the cloaca. Um, so birds have some distinct features and then let's take a look at carnivore versus herbivore. Now you guys probably know some things about this already and I bet you guys could contribute. So I'm going to turn this back to you. Um, what do you remember from, you know, learning from your nature shows that you like or previous classes? If you're a carnivore and you eat meat, if you're a wolf or a lion or a tiger or a bear, oh my, then what kind of teeth are you going to expect to find? Versus an herbivore, a plant eater, what kind of teeth? So again, hit pause and uh, talk amongst yourselves. So hopefully you guys agreed that if you're a carnivore, you're going to see the larger canine teeth sharper. You're going to see the molars. Even the molars will not have the, the level grinding, the cane, even the molars are going to have sharp edges because you're going to be predominantly tearing, um, the meat. You're going to be tearing into the food. Um, whereas with herbivores, there's going to be a lot more grinding. And, um, in fact, some herbivores have lost their top incisors like cows and deer. Uh, and so their purpose is really to grind up the plant material. The other thing you might notice is that in herbivores, their small intestine is much longer. And then they have this extra cecum. That extra length of the cecum is going to be super helpful in digesting the grass and leaves that herbivores eat. They're trying to get as much of the nutrients from the vegetation as possible. They've got to break down that cell wall if they can. Not all of them do. Uh, some herbivores are, are very inefficient. In fact, um, horses and elephants, when they... Um, defecate when they poop, a lot of the grass, um, uh, like the outer shell, the cell wall, you can kind of see that in their remains of their, uh, in their, uh, scat. And so that just kind of shows you that they don't, uh, they have to eat a lot more to get their nutrients. And so you can see in this next diagram that uh, here we have the differences shown in the teeth of some of the vertebrates. So here you have a fruit bat, 
Um, and so they're going to be eating uh, um, hard, pithy fruits in some cases, so they need the grinding. Here's a beaver with the large incisors. Um, here's a coyote with the canine teeth. Um, and the, here's the porpoise uh, versus a primate. Primates are pretty much whatever they can eat, flowers, fruits, berries. Uh, and then you have an anteater, which has lost its teeth, uh, and that's because they don't need to chew the little ants and termites they get. And again, you can see the uh, herbivores with their long intestine and cloaca, sorry, long intestine and cecum, and then the uh, large intestine as well. And here's the deer with even more elaborate uh, cecum and uh, extra loops that they have. So things get really complicated with herbivores. And it's all because they've got to try to break apart that vegetation. Uh, and you guys um, may, may recall from previous learning opportunities that some ruminants have the four chambered stomach. Uh, and that's, they're going to, they're going to grab a lot of vegetation, swallow it. Well, chew it a little bit, but swallow it. It's going to be digested a little bit, and then they're going to bring it back up. They're going to regurgitate to chew their cud. And then you can see the insectivore and the carnivore, they're going to have much shorter intestines, meat and protein uh, they may take a long time to digest, but they're easy to digest. So they just, you know, they, uh, they just want to extract as much as they can. And then they're going to get vegetation. Some of them are omnivores. Some of them are going to get the vegetation in the, um, in the remains of the animal that they eat as well. Uh, so, uh, you're going to watch a second video on, uh, some of the major parts and what they do. Uh, but you guys can also take a look at the mannequin and try to identify these major digestive parts. Uh, and here you can, um, look at all the parts of, and, and it's a handy breakdown of what they do and, uh, and when they do it. So, I uh, hope that gives you a little bit of introduction to our um, digestive system.